I feel really sad and almost conflicted at this current story that I want to share with you guys. It's regarding it's regarding the bad news Amazon workers have received about having to return to work. I feel so conflicted and bad for these people because a part of me feels like, you know what? Maybe it is time that we all go back into the offices. Maybe it is time that we all leave our comfortable homes and we start commuting again. Maybe it is time that we start to quote unquote touch grass instead of staying at home. But then on the other flip side of things, most of us, myself included, have spent what? The last four years or so getting used to and getting comfortable in working from home. Now to suddenly require us to fucking, you know, change everything about our daily lives and require to go in five days a week, that's a big change. Even some of the more stricter companies out there that I know of, um, from friends or just people I've seen online, they sometimes require you to go in twice a week, sometimes three times a week. But five, after working fully remote, oh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. After being 100% fully remote, to now have to be required to go into the office five days per week with no exceptions. Tough. But as well as Amazon, they do operate on the higher end of like output and whatnot. We all like our products getting to us very quickly. You would assume the only way to run that company and to successfully have our products arrive next day, sometimes in the same day, it would have to require people to work very, very hard. And maybe sometimes the only way to get people to work very hard is have them in the office. Who knows? Let's read the article here, courtesy of Sky News. It says, Amazon tells staff to get back to the office five days a week. It says, Amazon has told office workers they may no longer work from home except in extenuating circumstances. In It comes as Jonathan Reynolds, the UK's business secretary, said flexible working contributes to productivity, employee resilience, and staff retention. Am I mistaken or did I remember seeing an article somewhere about the uk exploring four-day work weeks i think i saw it somewhere i think i either saw it somewhere or maybe when i was checking for jobs sometime i think i might have seen places that are offering different types of full-time i think there's now full-time that's under 40 and a full-time that's over 40. so i think technically if you wanted to you could technically work full-time but you're going to work it within four days, but that would mean that you'd have probably longer four days, or you can work it the conventional, I guess, eight to 10 hours, five days a week. I think I saw that somewhere. So, but let's continue. Workers need to be judged on the outcomes and not the culture of, prison of, of presentism, says Mr. Reynolds. What's Amazon doing? Amazon has described the policy change as a returning to the way it worked before COVID-19 pandemic, being in the office five days a week. That's a good point, though. That is a good point. It was working perfectly fine before the pandemic. Most of us didn't even think about working from home. Like, I remember when I when I first got the opportunity to work from home, that might have been my first sort of office job. I was working for this, like, art materials manufacturer here in London, or here in the UK called Collart. They do, like, they produce all this, like, paint and shit. They're responsible for producing paint like Windsor Newton. They produce paint or they manufacture paint like Liquitex that they use for, for graffiti cans and shit. Or for spray cans, sorry. They do the same thing with um, Win uh, Windsor and Newton. They do stuff with acrylic and oils and shit, which was kind of a fun job doing some marketing stuff for them. And that was the first time I ever had the opportunity to work from home. Because sometimes on the Friday, um, your manager or whoever was in charge of that day will sometimes tell you, or maybe or like on the Thursday day before, hey, don't bother coming in on Friday because a lot of us are on site visits because a lot of the marketing team or the ops team would go to different stores and do activations and pop-ups and blah, blah, blah. So you, know, you will be office by yourself. So just work from home. And then that obviously required you to set up your laptop. At that time, I think I had one of those Dell notebooks with like the little red button on the middle. If you remember that, right? I think some companies still use them now, but those laptops are bulletproof. I fucking love that laptop, man. It was like a Dell laptop with a little red button in the middle of the keyboard. And um, you, know, you had to connect to the server. So in order for them to kind of know you're online, you connect to the server. And, and, and I think this might have been even before Teams. I think it might have been even before Teams had been set up. So you get to the server, and that's how they know you're currently online, and then you kind of work from home. And that was so fucking good. Honestly, it was such a it was such a treat, something that I never really expected. And then, of course, once I left Collart and started working in startups, the whole working from home thing was, like, normal, especially within my field of, like, marketing and influencer, social media type of shit. 
everyone kind of was like working from hot decks or working in working co-working spaces or working in coffee shops like everyone was always all over the place and a lot of the time a lot of the time us fellow startup people especially people that work in marketing and social media be honest with yourself a lot of the people that were doing this stuff were, were skiving this is this is pre-pandemic though pre-pandemic a lot of you motherfuckers that were going to fucking What's that coffee shop in Old Street? I think it's like Nitro something. I forgot. It's like a coffee shop. Like as you come out off of Old Street, Old Street is still there, but they used to sell like a Nitro brew. You could get those type of coffees in there. People would go work in there. People would go work in like the Ace Hotel when that used to be there in Shoreditch. And a lot of you motherfuckers, don't lie, would be in Ace Hotel drinking that fucking green tea, right? Getting that green tea by the jug and just sitting there and browsing your social media, updating your sound clouds, updating your fucking whatever you're doing, but not actually working. So I think a lot of us were skiving the same way some of these Gen Z kids are skiving, but we weren't as bait about it. I feel the Gen Z kids are too bait. They're out here fucking doing, you know, what I do in a day, fucking vlogs, videos and stuff, and they're just hotting up the whole thing, showing that it don't work. Like I saw a girl recently actually showing that she was working at Google as like a product manager. And I swear to God, the entire video was just her eating. She was popping in, oh, here we go, today I work. She scans in, she got this cute little outfit, takes a selfie of herself in the, in the lift. She goes and gets some breakfast. She goes and gets a fucking green, what you call it, like a, like a ginger shot. She goes to have a salad. She goes to have this, she goes, she, oh, she's just eating the whole day. And that day she's like, I'm gonna go do some work. It's like, fuck man, you baited it up. So I think, I think those kids killed it. I think those kids and some millennials killed the whole working from home thing because they just baited it up. They baited it up too much. And I'd imagine if you're on the board or some of these companies, if you're an investor and you saw these videos going viral and your investments were going down and you weren't able to go on your ski trips, your kid's schooling was in jeopardy at boarding school, you weren't able to afford your second fucking Bugatti, you're going to be pissed if you start seeing videos of like 20 somethings and 30, 40 somethings, you know, gallivanting and lollygaggling in fucking office and not working. So I get it from that point of view. I understand it. But I think this working from home, taking the piss culture has always existed. It's just a more visible now because of social media. So I don't think it's any different. I swear to God, it's not any different. But I also think it's a piss take because most of us are saving so much money from not, I know I am, from not commuting into work every single day. Because commuting into work, especially in London, is the number one caner of your wages. Because rent and your mortgage, I don't think you should think about it because you just have to do it. You don't have any choice, right? So you rent and mortgage, you don't really think about it. But usually, if you live in London, unfortunately, your rent and mortgage probably takes up 60% of your paycheck. Maybe more, depending on how much you earn, right? Or maybe less, who knows? But definitely over 50%, right? And the rest of it goes to travel. So if you can save, I don't know, 400 no let's say 200 pounds a month on travel that's a lot that's a lot of money man 200 pounds a month on travel means that most likely you're going out to more drinks and i don't know about you guys but i know in my social group not me personally because i don't like human beings i stay myself indoors i don't like talking to people i don't like i don't have friends fuck everybody but i know most people within my social group i have not it's, it's not a coincidence that most of my friends who are working from home are also now tending to go out more with their friends. They're meeting up for dinners, they're hanging, they're going to birthday parties, they're going to christenings, they're going to baby showers, you know what I mean? They're meeting up for drinks, they're going on holiday together. I don't think it's a coincidence that those things have increased now because people have money to save. Because if you go into work every day, like I used to go to work, into work physically, most of the time, that means you're also going out after work because you mean your colleagues. So most likely from Wednesday to Friday, you're going out for drinks every fucking evening. You're also spending money on lunch. Like I'm quite disciplined and I would always take my lunch with me every single day to work. But it'll be some days where you'd be tired of eating fucking chicken and rice. So you want to buy something. Suddenly you're buying something, you're spending 10 pounds on your lunch. So it all fucking adds up. So a lot of us who have kind of saved a bunch of money, who've kind of had an improvement in our overall lifestyles and shit and our quality of life, let's say, we're going to be bummed when these companies are like, you know what, it's mandatory. We're going to go back to how it was pre-pandemic. No more flipping, uh, working from home five days a week. It's going to kill a lot of us. And I'd imagine there's going to be some of us out there who are going to choose where we work based on whether or not they allow you to work from home. That's going to be a number one. It's gonna, And again, I think beforehand that was a little bit of a 
it was, it was kind of one of those things that companies would dangle as a carrot. Hey, we have the possibility to work from home. But I think a lot of people, especially some of the better candidates, which a lot of companies are competing for, they're going to be the ones who are going to dictate what's going on in the future now. Because they're going to be like, you know what? No, I've got offers so or I've got options. So I'm not going to just go to you because you're saying yes. You're going to have to guarantee me that I can work from home a set number of days and come in. Because I think some of us don't mind. I, I don't know. I, I, you know. I'm not that bothered about it being fully remote. I've checked on my socials and shit. And a lot of my... A lot of people that have been browsing on Twitter, especially on the basis of this news about Amazon, especially some people in America, they're very strict. The American people are not having it. The American startup people are not having it. Most of the employees are like, no, it has to be fully remote. But I feel like in Europe and in the UK, from what I've seen, a lot of people understand the companies need some of us to be in on Sunday. So we're happy to do like a half and half. But making us go in fully full time in the office seems a bit excessive, especially after all this time that we spent outside of the office making that a lifestyle thing you know it's probably improved the amount of it's, it's, it's probably maybe i would guess again this is me thinking out of the box here and talking out my ass but i would assume it's probably allow people to even start families maybe some people legitimately can't afford childcare, and it's allowed people to actually start families like you know what i couldn't afford i couldn't afford a child minder i couldn't afford child care but now that we're working from home we could actually have a kid and we could look after the kid because we're both at home you know as, as like parents and shit as opposed to before where you have to think about childcare, you have to think about this you have to think about that so it's definitely changed people's lives for the better so for to to change this now would be catastrophic for most people i'd imagine anyway let me continue before i bore you it says a letter from amazon chief andy jesse said that those situations included when staff and children were sick house emergencies traveling for work or coding in a more isolated environment some staff who had been given exemption and presumption to work remotely will remain able to do so. The changes will take place as effective of 2nd of January next year. As Mr. Jesse said, the company understands that the, that, that, that understands staff has set up their personal lives in such a way that return to office consistently five days per week will require some adjustment. So to be fair to Amazon, they have given the people at Amazon a lot of time, the, the higher ups. They said, look, it's going to come into effect on January 2nd. So at least they've given people time now for at the end of the year to get their affairs in order and then make the change. That's that's pretty decent of them because they could have easily just said, hey, it's happening next week. So at least they've given people a bit of a heads up. It continues, why the change? Amazon believes that being in the office is better for the business. Looking back on five years of hybrid work um, from home and uh, in the office, Mr. Jesse said the advantages of being together in the office is significant. Learning together generating ideas and strengthening company culture is simpler and more effective in the office while teaching is more seamless and teams are better connected he said if anything the last 15 months has been back in the office at least three days a week has strengthened our conviction about the benefits now if you've done training before which i've done i've taken part in training and i've also given training you will know given training over slack giving training over teams giving training over zoom is such a ball ache it is such a ball lake. You know, giving training with somebody and you're sitting by them side by side in the office or you're in a meeting room somewhere is far better. You also learning from a whiteboard somewhere in a room with other people who are learning at the same time is far better. But a part of me wonders if what they're doing <coughs> isn't really addressing the problem. If they're saying working from working in the office is way more important than working from home and it actually benefits the overall company success maybe they have to look at who they're hiring maybe the people that they're hiring day to day maybe people that they're hiring day to day right maybe those people that they're hiring day to day aren't able to work on their own aren't able to work without supervision so they're those people are the problem as opposed to changing the whole entire way people work maybe you have to kind of focus on hiring people who can work on their own initiative, who can work without being micromanaged, who can work independently without coming to the office. Maybe that's a big thing. Or the actual reality of it is, maybe in companies, corporations, which you'd imagine, maybe the top 5 to 10% are the ones that carry the whole team anyway, but you need the top 5% to perform to kind of get the other people who are maybe bad performers or, you know, whatever, to kind of raise to their standards. And that can only happen when you're in the office together. And everyone's kind of feeling that pressure of somebody working and being locked in and getting this and getting that. That kind of adds to the overall kind of environment. Maybe that's part of the reason. Who flipping knows? It continues. It's working from home to stay. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's just watch this. What's this? Businesses react to the four-day week. Let's see this. What's this about?
What four days is Catherine on next week? Nothing says both work and leisure like the humble British pub. So where better to discuss Labour's plans for a better work-life balance than a pub which has trialled its own four-day week? with surprising results. We did a three-month trial um, and then we looked into the um, feedback from that and the reviews and the biggest bit of feedback we got through interviewing people, looking at different hours, um, their enjoyment at work, their productivity and all those different elements was that actually people didn't take us up on it as much as we thought they would. We found out that it wasn't actually a four-day week that people were after, it was more the value in the flexibility of their working hours, the choice to work when you want to work. And that flexibility is key to understanding what's going on here. Labour is pushing back pretty strongly against some of the headlines. They say the plan is to strengthen the right to ask for flexible working. That might include, amongst other things, so-called compressed hours, doing five days' worth of work in four, for example. But it's not quite the same thing as imposing a four-day working week. I think that's perfectly fine. I think most of us, myself included, if somebody told me I had to work let's say from nine to eight four days a week but then i get three days off i'm taking that by the third day you're going to be dying you're going to be hanging your eyes are going to be bleeding but i legitimately would take working nine to nine even four days a week and then having three days off rather than doing nine to six and then kind of doing like no but you know basically clocking in for the sake of clocking in but not really doing any kind of constructive work just kind of keeping up you know Keep up appearances work for the most part and then most of the work gets done because I think in the normal work week, myself included, I think most of my actual real work gets done Monday to Wednesday like, or that free, the first three days of the week is where my real work gets done. By the time Thursday and Friday comes around, the emails start to dry up or the amount of stuff that you can action and put into place really take a bit of a nosedive. By the end of the week, there's not really much you can actually do. You have to kind of wait until the next week. People might be out, especially during this sort of time where people are going on holiday and blah, 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 back to school, da, 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 da. It's hard to really get anything done. So if you can compress some of those hours in, I would definitely take that. I'm not going to lie. But the Conservatives sense an opportunity to paint this as part of a damaging attack on British business. These kind of new regulations that are coming forward will have a French-style, very pernicious effect on the workplace. And if you want growth, you need businesses to invest. If you want businesses to invest, you need certainty. And this is creating uncertainty. It'll be very damaging for the business community. Certainly not all businesses see the positives. This West Country manufacturer also recently trialled compressed hours, but with less obvious success. Where we failed to make it work was because we, we managed the day-to-day but fundamentally, the sort of business planning, the development, moving things forward, that, that just fell by the wayside. And that's where we'd be back to. So our growth you know, stopped. And I didn't go into business to manage a school register and, and a rotor. The government's argument is that flexible working boosts productivity. But they'll need to convince businesses across the country that it's not going to create just another rod for their backs. Matthew Thompson, Sky News, Woking. Yeah, I guess it depends what sector you're in. But I think if you're in something like what this guy's in, where you're, you know, I don't know, manufacturing and whatnot, four days a week don't make any sense. You have to kind of exhaust the amount of week working days that you have during the working week and get the most out of it. But then I guess the problem with him would be if he's working on a five-week schedule, but then other businesses are working on a four-day week schedule, you're going to be, it's costing you some money to operate. So you're going to kind of need to be aligned all across the board in general, you'd imagine. Anyway, it continues. The UK government, however, has attempted to facilitate remote work for more people. It's already trialled um, plans to extend the right to request remote and flexible working hours from the first day of employment. There are real economic benefits to be had from the UK adopting this approach. Um, the UK has a very significant regional inequality. It could play a significant contributions to tackling that. He did concede that there are situations that legitimately need to workforce in the office, such as a new staff need to learn for those more experienced. Amazon UK Union, GMB, has said the move is another example. Of Amazon has one reputation, one of the worst employers around. <laughs> one of the worst employers around. But we all we all use it, Jeremy. We all use Amazon services, but most likely it probably is a hell working for Amazon. Let's be real. It probably is hell. But what did you expect? Do you know what I mean? 
they get you they get they get a fucking five pound charger to you next day what did you expect you expect the working environment of a place that gets you a five pound charger to your doorstep next day to be good come on of course not so but the funny thing about it is like most of us like working class middle class people have now had the opportunity to do something that a lot of people have been doing for a long time taking a piss and now that we're all collectively doing it and taking advantage of this kind of you know way of working where you get to work from home for some days of the week look at how the whole industry is changing everybody's asking for new legislation and talking about it in the house of commons and all this movement just because regular working class middle class people have now actual work-life balance it's shaking the whole industry is shaking countries. It's shaking the whole financial system. You see how rigged the system is. You see how rigged the system is. Finance guys have been taking the piss, working from home, working remotely in a fucking pub, doing lines at lunchtime while we've been toiling away, working away at our fucking shitty jobs. And now we finally got a little bit of a chance to work from home. Look at how they're freaking out. Look at how they're freaking out. Like, no, it's too much. They're working from home. Uh, uh. It's like, bruh, let us breathe, man. Let us breathe. Let us breathe. For goodness sake, let us breathe. But one interesting sign of this is the kind of cultural shift or the, the shift in attitudes towards this, right? Look at this person on Twitter. Now, again, this person could be trolling. But look what this person posted in light of what happened with the Amazon um, telling everybody to go back to work five days a week. This person says on Twitter, done. No longer joining Twitch slash Amazon. I'm out of here. Life switches up on you real fast. Gotta adapt, dogs. Congrats on Amazon for losing their best engineers. I had a $380,000 per year new grad offer, by the way. Not sure what I'm going to do next. Maybe back to Quant. Maybe A16ZR. A16Z, sorry, SR. Or maybe start my own startup. So it looks like this kid, recent graduate, maybe from doing computer science, was offered out of uni a salary of 380000 remote. But now that Amazon is requesting everybody to go back into the office, he's like, fuck that. I'd rather w look for another company that can offer me a remote or start my own startup. So I wonder if this is going to be a thing we'll start seeing. People actually declining to work for some of these companies because they are mandating, you know, working from the office and there's no exceptions unless you've got some extenuated circumstances pretty crazy to turn down a three hundred eighty thousand a year contract because it's not fully remote and most likely though you would imagine most likely there's a possibility other companies are going to take advantage of this and be like you know what if amazon is going to lose all their best engineers <coughs> because they require them to work from the office we're going to sweep up and we're going to take them and say, hey, you can work remotely. Because if you know, working for a, any sort of company, most of the guys that work in that department anyway are, you know, they're not the most sociable guys anyway. They could do that job in the middle of a, a McDonald's. They can do it in the middle of traffic. They don't actually need to be in the office for the most part. They can do that easily remotely. So it probably is a bit of a piss take for the engineers and developers to be in the office. Everybody else probably needs to be, whereas the developers and engineers are probably a little bit more of a self-starter type, so they can kind of easily do it. Um, and he continues as well, and he says, I have a mortgage to pay, though, so I've got to still make bank, but honestly thinking of just doing my own startup thing, we will let you know, going to spend the day looking at opportunities, rock climbing and balatro. Let me know if anything cool is coming up in NYC. If it's not clear, the reason that i'm doing this because of the five-day office mandate from amazon so let's see how this works out for people i'm curious to see how it works out going forward i'm curious to see how people react to stuff like this i can see it from both sides i think if i had a business um i would probably like my employees to come in some days a week i think it's nice for the culture it's nice for the environment it's nice for just the camaraderie between people and i also think sometimes being fully remote and then going in it's kind of counterproductive i've noticed that with myself um, as you guys know, I'm a fucking world class and professional yapper. And I've noticed that when you work from home and then you have to go in once a week or once per month, you all start yapping because you haven't seen each other in so long. Maybe you haven't, maybe like myself, you haven't seen other humans in real life in a long, long time. So when you get to see them, you're so excited. You start yapping about everything and whatever, catching up on all this sort of stuff. What happened to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your kid, your cat, your fucking octopus, your fucking caterpillar, whatever fucking happened. And then guess what happens? You don't work. 
So it's actually counterproductive. So sometimes maybe increasing the amount of time you're in the office and mandating it per week is actually beneficial and allows you to kind of all chill out and not be so eager to fucking yap and talk when you guys see each other in real life. Again, I could be wrong, but that's something that I've observed when I've been out there in the workforce. So let's see how this plays out for Amazon. It's a bit of a mad one. Thoughts and prayers to everybody who works at Amazon, who was working fully remotely and now has to work at Amazon five days a week now. Absolutely torture, but keep your head up. Keep your blood clot head up. Keep your blood clot head up.